Hey, what is going on everybody? Uh, welcome back to another marvelous lesson in the Let's Build That App.com channel. I uh, hope you're doing fantastically out there, wherever you are. In today's video, what I would like to teach everyone how to do is to build out a bar chart inside of Swift UI. And for our bar chart, we are going to include some animations right here. So let's kind of take a look at what's going on. At the very top, we have a text label. In the middle, we have a custom picker. Every time we toggle from the data set of weekday, afternoon, and evening, you'll see the bar chart below with the seven bars right here will animate just like that. Now, if you're looking at this, and maybe if you're coming from the UI kit world, uh, you might be thinking that building out something like this is really difficult but it's surprisingly easy uh, to build out this entire application in Swift UI, and we'll learn exactly how to do that in today's lesson. So inside of our code today, we're going to learn four important things. So well, the first thing you have to kind of know and figure out is uh, how exactly can we build out a picker with this segment style right here? So pretty easy stuff. Uh, we also have to find out how to bind the picker to the element values inside of the bar chart below. And that's also pretty simple once you see the code. Uh, and lastly, these shapes right here are called capsules inside of Swift UI. So this is just a new shape that you can use. And then finally, uh, finally, if we have enough time in this super long video that I'm predicting, uh, maybe we'll talk about light and dark mode. So here's the light mode. Uh, let me switch over to the settings down here. We have developer. Let's change the dark appearance. It looks like that. And this is the dark mode appearance uh, that we have. You kind of see some of the colors are inverted. So click on that and that and that. And you know, that looks pretty good. Again, if we have enough time, I'll show you exactly how to do that. But uh, for today's example, let's kind of start out by drawing out this application here. Again, it's pretty simple once you get used to the Swift UI kind of development process. And uh, the way you want to start off your project is to use some kind of application that is going to simply say calorie intake in the middle. So what exactly do I have for this project? Well, uh, you know, very similar to the other tutorial lessons, we have a single view app, a text right here, calorie intake, right? Uh, if you want to modify the font size, you can use that with a size of 34. So that's relatively large. And the font weight, let's see, heavy, heavy, heavy. Uh, I think that's heavy. Uh, let's see how heavy it looks. Okay, so here is the heavy font in the middle. Uh, you might be asking why it's in the middle, but just by default, these views are going to center your components. Uh, if you want to give this a background color, you can use some kind of Z stack. This is what I prefer to use. So let's pop the text inside of our Z stack here. And that looks good to me. Uh, one thing that you can do is to use some kind of color here. And let's say color green. Uh, this color is obviously not green. So this is a very ugly green. I don't really like that. And you also have these edges at the very top. So you can use ignore. Uh, let's see, what is this right here? So color green and edges. Uh, ignoring safe area of all that'll kind of ignore the top and bottom safe area guides and looks like that right now okay so how exactly do you choose these colors inside of swift ui well you can try to do something like color literal so color literal is that going to pop up let's try to type this out one more time so color literal so you get this little tiny little box that you can double click choose other choose the eye drop click on that and then close that guy out. Now you have this block, right? What you can do is cut that and you can use this here. So just wrap that color inside of these parentheses and, and now you'll have your background color like so. Okay, so that's pretty simple. Uh, hopefully you guys are able to follow along. This lesson might be really long if I have to go through every detail, but uh, I'll try to go through this pretty quickly. Uh, next thing we need to do is to start drawing out this little weekday afternoon evening picker. Uh, this is something new that it took me a while to figure out how to do. But basically, a picker has a couple of initializers. Let's use the first one. We have binding and label right here. Let's fix this guy right here. So just use a text of empty. I don't really care about the label. The content is here. Let's use content of, uh, let's see, that is text. 
So week day, and let's copy this two more times, and let's say afternoon. Uh, down below, let's get evening here. All right, finally with this picker right here, um, you have to define a binding variable. And this binding is going to be used for uh, for helping us figure out what toggle state this guy is in. So uh, for weekday, we have zero, afternoon is one, and evening is two. Uh, let's kind of fix this right now with a state variable, a var, and a picker selected item, and let this guy equal to zero. Okay, this is what I need. And in order to get the binding version of this picker variable right here, let's just use a dollar sign, put that in here, and I think I'm ready to rock and roll. Uh, let's see, run, run, run. You see inside of your application, you have some kind of picker right here, right? So it looks pretty weird. And the reason why it's doing that is because you don't have the segment style. Uh, let's say the picker style and segment style. Uh, initialize it with the empty parens and run that now. Okay, so that's kind of what you get. And the reason why it's kind of stacked on top of each other is because we don't have a V stack just yet. So pop in a V stack and every one of your elements inside of your V stack will be aligned uh, from top to bottom. So there was an ambulance just outside. But uh, now we have the weekday, afternoon, and evening. Uh, you'll notice that when you start off your application, right, you probably want to have the weekday highlighted. And the way you want to do this is to provide a tag right here. So tag of zero, tag of one, and tag of two. This to me feels like kind of a hack, but this is how you kind of operate with Swift UI. Uh, with the default value of zero, you'll see that your weekday is highlighted because, you know, obviously the zeros match here and here. You can change this to a one if you wanted to do so. And then uh, the afternoon will be highlighted just like that. Again, Swift UI is pretty simple. Okay, now if you want to provide some padding values for here, you can use something simple on the picker. So padding, let's use horizontal. Uh, what do we want? So maybe a value of 24. You'll see on the horizontal left and right edges, uh, you'll get some kind of gap that is 24. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, last thing we wanna do is to start drawing out these bars right here. And uh, how exactly do we draw out this horizontal set of bars? Well, uh, because we have something that's horizontal, let's obviously use an H stack. Uh, instead of here, I'm going to use a Z stack, and you'll see why in just a bit. Uh, let's use a capsule. Uh, for the capsule, you can use a frame of, uh, let's see, width of 30 and the value of 200. Let's kind of see if this is what I need. So width and height, 30 and 200 looks like this for the capsule. Okay, because we have a Z stack right here, right? We can pretty much copy this and use a foreground, uh, let's say white. I think that looks okay. And let's try to draw out. Uh, so this is a value 100. You'll see that the white in the front is half of the height of the black in the back. So pretty simple stuff. Uh, if you want to align everything correctly, you can provide an alignment. Uh, this guy is always really hard to type for me. I don't really know why, but uh, Z-Stack, alignment, and bottom. Uh, now everything is going to be aligned just like so. Okay, this is looking pretty nice. I'm going to use a padding of top of 24 as well, or maybe something smaller, but you know, obviously you can configure these values to be whatever you want. Uh, for the background color of this black right here, why don't we use a uh, foreground color for the uh, the top capsule? And uh, inside of Swift UI, I find it a little bit hard to get the color literal to pop out in there. So this is what I do. Click on that. And I click on this. Let's see. Grab that right there. Uh, hopefully you guys can see what's going on in my screen. Uh, let's use that. So you have to wrap this in a color, which is kind of annoying. And, you know, that should be all I need. I think we want to use a uh, that maybe, and that looks okay. So wrap that in the parentheses and you should be cool. Uh, we have our bars coming in pretty nicely. Uh, you can draw a text on the bottom as well if you wanted to do so. So, you know, maybe you have a V stack right here. Uh, v stack, get that right here, grab the Z stack put that in here and on the UV stack, maybe a text right here and say day for, or D for day. And I believe that is looking pretty solid. 
Okay, obviously this guy maybe have some padding, right? So padding, uh, top and four, uh, maybe eight is a better value. Okay, so now that we have our bars being drawn out inside of this shape right here, you can start modifying these values, right? So let's use a value of 50. Uh, this should come out to be one fourth of the entire bar like that. If you use one to 50, it should be three fourths of this 200 value. And uh, you know, that's pretty much how you change the, uh, the look of your bars. Okay, um, with this stack right here, now we can see is if you kind of multiply this by copying and pasting a couple of times, uh, you'll have three bars being aligned horizontally like that. And you know, that looks okay. Maybe let's provide some spacing values for the horizontal stack. And with a value of 16, we have this, so you know, gaps of 16. And this is looking quite nice. Uh, moving on here, why don't we uh, try to refactor out some of this code? So I don't like, you know, having so much code inside of my H stacks. And what I mean is I like to refactor this into some kind of external uh, widget. And for the bar chart, let's say var body and some view and paste all that code in here. Now what I can do is, well, this is not actually the bar chart, but some kind of bar view. All right, so one single bar view. And now we can just replace this right here with a bar view, bar view, and bar view. Create them with the uh, parentheses. And now you'll have three bars that look just like what it did previously. Uh, if you want to provide your bars with some kind of value, you can say var value and cg float of a value of zero. Okay, let's use the value right here for the height right here. And once you provide some kind of variable like this, uh, I think you have to instantiate it inside of here if you don't initialize it. So let's use a backspace and require this guy with a value. Uh, let's make a upward slip, so 50. Uh, value is 100 and then value right here is going to be 150. So basically it's going to start off with 50, 100, and 150. Uh, that's why we have this upward sloping bar chart. And it looks pretty nice, right? Obviously you can copy this value a couple more times and you'll have seven days inside of your entire bar chart. Uh, something that you might try to replicate this is to use a for each loop inside of here. But I notice uh, when I use a for each loop, I don't really get the animations. So I'm going to avoid the for each and we'll just use this code for now. Uh, last thing we want to introduce is for these toggles right here, right? You see weekday, afternoon and evening. Uh, that's looking pretty good. We have three states being changed inside of this picker selected item. And in order to modify these values right here, what you can do is you can do this. I'm just going to simply say states and variable, and let's say data points or yeah, data points, you know, whatever this has to be. Let's make it a CG float and let's use some kind of value right here. I'm going to use a value of 50, 100, and 150 again. And for data points, what I'm going to do is for each one of these bars value right here, right? We have 50, we have 100, and 150. So this guy right here doesn't exactly like this. So I'll wrap that inside of a bracket and you should be good. Uh, inside of this value right here, let me show you what I'll do. Data points and self.picker. So I think that is what I can use. Okay, let me try to build. Everything looks okay. I'm going to copy this and paste that in here and here. And once I run this, you'll see that everything is going to start with the value of 50 because the picker selected item is zero, right? So these guys are uh, data point zero right here, so 50. If I toggle this, you'll see that uh, the evening, afternoon values will change the bar chart at the very bottom because right now data points is using picker selected item and whatever this toggle changes to one and two uh, we'll toggle to one and two and all this wor is working because we have the bindable value right here and also data points is a state variable so anytime these values change right here the ui is automatically going to be redrawn so really cool stuff with swift ui and having to set up this type of application in ui, in UI kit is actually pretty difficult well, maybe it's not difficult, but it's extremely verbose and involves a lot of code. All right, the last thing we want to do is to introduce some animations. What you can do is for your H stack right here, you can say animation.default. And when you now change the state of whatever is inside your H stack, it's going to animate like that. So evening, weekday, afternoon, and evening like so. 
All right, looking pretty good. And the last thing you might want to do is to introduce some variation with your data. Uh, what I mean is, let's say we want to start the data off as something else, right? Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a data set as a, a multi-dimensional array. So what I mean is I'm going to wrap this guy in another bracket. And instead of here, let's use this bracket here. And let's flip this around. Let's say flip that around. And what do I want? 150, 150, uh, 150. And then the last data set is going to be something like 10, uh, 20, and 30. Okay, so with data points right here, what I can do is I can use this instead. So zero, uh, one, and also two. And uh, everything is being uh, highlighted again with the syntax highlighting. And this means right now, if I change the actual state right here, it's going to animate from this data set to this data set to this data set on the uh, line 19. And this is 10, 20, and 30. Going back to that, we have this value right here. So obviously, if you want to change the state of all these elements right here, you'll need additional bar charts, right? So let's just do this and let's just do that. Let's draw out uh, four different values right there. And if you run this right now, you will probably see a crash because your values right here don't have a three and a four value. So you're going to have to change that to something else so that your application doesn't crash. So let's go 30 and 40. And this value is 210. You know, these are just random values at this point. And uh, now I try to run and hopefully everything is going to run correctly. So here are five bars of so afternoon and evening like so. Again, now the reason why I'm not using a for each loop here is because when you use a for each, the animations don't actually work. Um, and there's a long explanation as to why animations don't work for for each loops. And it has to deal with these bindables and the states. And uh, it just doesn't work with for each loops. So avoid using that uh, if you want to deal with animations. Okay, so this is looking quite nice. If you want to provide the days right here, you might want to do something else with a struct model object and uh, use the struct inside of these data points instead. But I'll leave that exercise up to you. Uh, if you want to modify this application to support some kind of light and dark mode, uh, what exactly do you do, right? Well, if you want to support dark mode, you have to look at this app right here, right? Everything looks okay, in my opinion. Uh, if you flip over to dark mode, some of the colors are going to look a little bit different. So let me go back into these settings right here. There is a little developer, click on that and click on dark appearance. So let's go back to our application right now. And you'll see that uh, things are looking fine, I guess, but uh, the colors aren't looking all that great. So let's say we want to modify some of these values, right? Uh, let's say we want to modify in dark mode, we want to take the background and make it completely black. So how exactly do we you know, do that, right? So in other words, I want to go inside of here, go inside of dark mode. So dark appearance, everything is dark. And you see the background here is actually dark. So this line on line 24 determines the background right there. And the background is just this hard-coded uh, color value. If you go inside of your assets right here, uh, you can define some color assets. So let's remove these two that I have previously defined uh, down here. Let's enter a new color set and let's say uh, app background as the string. Uh, inside of here, you can click on that and use this on the right side. So right here, we have the appearance of any light and dark. This is the light, so click on that. For the light, we're going to use this value here. For the dark, let's use a value of black. So let's use that right here. Okay, so now you have this app background thing. Uh, let's copy this string here, go back to content view. And for this, you want to use the string of whatever you define inside your assets. And so now when you run your application, the background is going to use the style that you define inside of the assets. So it's black here. If you go back to your uh, settings, dark appearance, modify that to be light mode again, uh, you'll see the application is going to appear in this light color. 
Uh, so, you know, that's pretty much how you change the colors of the things inside of your application. Let's go back to dark right here. And the color for the fonts right here, uh, calorie intake. You'll notice that previously it was black, right? So let's kind of see what it looks like previously in light moon. Kind of looks like this dark color. Uh, whenever you're developing your apps inside of Swift UI, if you have just a font or some kind of text with these font styles right here, by default, this text is going to use a dark color. And then if you don't define any color on it, when you flip it over to dark appearance, it's going to invert the default color. So it was black before, kind of like that. And then now it's actually using the inverted black, which is obviously a light color. Now, uh, kind of light earlier, this isn't exactly black. So let's say for example, right? This is the last thing I'll do for today. Let's say for example, the text right here, this is some kind of dark color and let's define it as color and uh, uh, dark title. Or why don't we just use title? So this title, you can do the exact same thing instead of here, let's use a color set of title right here. Click on that, 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 some kind of light dark. Let's go to lights and maybe this guy right here. And this is some kind of really dark green. Hopefully you guys can see the color and this is the uh, dark appearance. I'll leave it as the light right here. And if I run the application now, I believe in the light mode, we'll have a darker colors. Okay, so this is the light white for dark appearance. And for the dark appearance, we can click on that and bring us back into the application. Now the calorie intake title has the foreground color of some kind of supported light and dark style. Alrighty, everybody, that's gonna wrap it up for today's marvelous lesson on how to build out a bar chart with animations, along with some kind of picker with the segmented picker style. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you want to download the source code for today's lesson, uh, head on over to letsbuildthatapp.com. Uh, while you're here, check out some of the courses that are available down below. And for the source code, head on over to the app guides. And down here is the calorie intake bar chart. Uh, click inside of here, you can just open this section and just download the code using this button right here. Uh, there are other guides available as well. So let's say you want to learn how to build out a calculator application. Uh, click on the calculator and here is exactly how you build it out. All of these steps are right here so you can draw out everything. And uh, this is pretty much how the guides looks like. Uh, again, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave a thumbs up and uh, also maybe subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I will hopefully see everyone in the next video. Bye guys.